Or you up for another shake and <sighs> Or you up for another shake and brew. Today we will make a shake and blonde. This is a shake to glass video which means that you get to see this from shake to tasting of the beer. So we can see the brewing and the tasting in one video. Nice. So Belgian blonde shake and brew style. Today we're gonna try to speed this up really quickly. But enough talking, let's just kick it. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. I'm a Swedish home brewer doing stupid things here on YouTube about beer and home brewing. And if you haven't checked out any videos in the Shake and Brew series, this is an extract brewing series. Simple brewing, but with really nice results so far. You can go and check all the other videos I will link down below to the Shake and Brew playlist. But today we're gonna see if we can do this quite quickly. Today's episode is sponsored by Angel G, so we will use their CS31, which is to be good for a lot of Belgian style beers. I haven't tried this just yet, so it's gonna be super interesting. And I will also have some Angel G yeast nutrients, we'll try that out also. The CS31 also can handle a lot of alcohol, but this beer we're aiming for something. I'm using quite a lot of sugar here today, so maybe 6.3 up to 6.8. We'll see how much this friend mans out. We're shaking already. This is hot. This is sanitizer in it. I would also recommend that you soak your honey in something hot. Quite simple recipe here today with a little twist. 250 grams of candy sugar, 500 grams each of light spray malt, and the doctor will put everything also here on the screen in birds and stones, as usual. Thirty-three grams of mandarin and bavaria. Clogged up. Pinch of yeast nutrient. One little piece of star anise. And I will boil up one liter of water to start with to dissolve this and to get the bitterness and I guess flavor also out of the hops. No, I forgot about the honey. Sorry. 250 grams of honey. One liter of boiling water and I will use this as a squirt protector. Put the lid on. See, they set a timer for five minutes. Five minute timer and the gloves I stole from homeless to protect me from some of the heat because this is hot. So if you're trying to replicate this at home, which you shouldn't, but if you do, ask your mom to help you. You can really hear the sugar in there. Hope it will dissolve. But I'm thinking if it no, won't dissolve right now, Hopefully we'll do that during fermentation. Is this good content? Should we do the dance also? Shake it like the doctor, shake it like the doctor. Fuck. Okay, time is up. The sugars are not fully dissolved. Much of it has, I can hear the difference from the start. But I need to get this down into temperature to stop the bittering process from the hops. I do this crazy experiment here on the channel. If you replicate this, do it a little bit differently. Try to dissolve the sugar before at least the uh, hard candy sugar. I will add eight liters of water in total. This is a nine liter cake. This is a little bit cold because the bottles have been sitting outside, but we will come up to temp shortly. I will use a heating mat to control the temperature of the fermentation. Get our yeast in. CS31 from Angel Yeast. Of course, you should always rehydrate dry yeast, but I'm feeling lazy. And this is supposed to be a super simple way of brewing and fast. I'm gonna start this as 25C. That is the maximum temperature according to Angel Yeast. The recommended max temperature is 22, but I'm fermenting under pressure. So I'm gonna ferment a little bit hotter to speed things up. This is a cask which 
filter, floating filter, because everything will be in here. We will not take anything out. We have the hops, we have the star anise and all the gunk. And this will be brewed, fermented and served in the same vessel. Going in. I'm gonna put some pressure on here just to be able to dial in my spanning valve. I will start this around one bar, that's 15 psi ish. And always take your thermometer off when you attach your spanner. Or else, or a shot that across the room. Let's try it again. Nice. Heating mat, probe, insulator. I will be using my STC 1000. A lot of stuff I do use for beer and brewing. You can find on my Amazon storefront. You also find a lot of stuff I use for filming, 3D printing, and fermenting food and more. So you can go and check that out. The probe is insulated, and this is super cold, but this will quickly get up to temperature. I will video on how to control this this way when we're just using heat and we don't have a fridge. You can check that out below. I will start this as 25C and in here we have 20C. This is showing that this is around 19C. I think it's a little bit colder but you can argue what is the most accurate, the temperature probe of the STC 1000 or my arm. You should also insulate this. Am I screaming? Why didn't I wait with the spanning valve? Because I'm stupid. This can stand here and look fancy while I record some other videos. And if nothing's really serious happening, I guess I'll see you at tasting. Two and a half weeks later, this fermented out in about a week. I bumped up the pressure and bumped up the temperature in the end. The original gravity I couldn't measure because all of the sugar didn't dissolve, as you saw. And I learned a little bit from that. But calculated it should be 1055 and as this is sugar no mashing it should be quite accurate but it's it's not need to be on exactly par but even though if you're mashing you can get some accurate calculations my old brewing system which i brewed with for years until it fell apart <laughs> it still works though i got like, almost always a 78 brew house efficiency if, if it was sticky beer, like wheat beer or rye or a lot of oats in it, I would drop down to like 72%. This beer fermented out to 10.08, which means that the ABV is 6.2%. Quite nice. The recipe for this one is ordered up in the big Dr. Hans recipe book for my patrons to dig into. And if you want even more content and support my channel, I do have Patreon, a channel membership, or if you just want to buy me a beer, all links down below. PayPal and shit. Enough talking, let's make this epic pour. If you scooch in a little bit further, yes, better, thank you. And the doctor will put, yes, now we're talking. And this carbonation is all from the fermentation, so natural called beer, nice. Is this good content? I could have left this for a couple of weeks to clear out even further, but I want to finish the video. Which shaking brew do you want to see me brew next? I have some cool ideas. <sighs> yeah, it smells like a Belgian blonde to me. Spiciness, slight hint of banana, some cloves even. Cheers. Really nice. Even more cloves on the taste and that little hint of spiciness slight banana. It do have some sweetness but also alcohol brings sweetness to the beer. This is a 6.2% beer. I can taste the alcohol. Maybe this is a little bit drier than I rem remember my blondes. We need to like dial in the uh, shake and brew recipe. We added quite a lot of sugars. That honey and the Belgian candy sugar. So maybe we could have used more DME in this recipe and dialed back the sugar a little bit. We're learning stuff here. I'll try to refine this recipe in the future. So I do this video also for me, so I can go back to them and, and have a look how to perfect a beer if I wanted to. Cheers. I have tried brewing blondes before, but I must say, I think this is one of the best blondes I ever brewed, if not the best. I will link down below to my Belgian blonde videos. I, I should have at least one video. 
I know that. I think it's a quite hard style to nail, at least it has been for me. Do you want me to try to compare this to a commercial version like the Leffe or Grimbergen? Speaking of Grimbergen blonde versus Leffe blonde, you can have a look at this video where I core a personal winner between the two blondes. But do try to brew this one, maybe with the little shade we talked about, and also comment on which beer you want me to brew in the Shake and Brew series. Hello!